Daniel, you're upset at the Miami House Democrats because, you know, they said something. Yeah, they what, did. What, what is the quandary? Um, they are in a very <laughs> tough position. They have been telling everyone for years, hey, better vote blue no matter who. Then they're also like, yeah, unless that blue is Bernie Sanders, then maybe not. Let's talk about it. So Bernie Sanders may have emerged with the most votes from the two first contests in the uh, 2020 Democratic primary, but Miami... Miami's House Democrats echoed many lawmakers in Washington this week when they said that it's far too soon to consider the prospect of a Democratic Socialist as the party's nominee. Uh, quote, he's not going anywhere. To He's not going to be the nominee. That seems pretty assertive for someone uh, dealing with probability, said Rep. Donna Shalala. Uh, said when she was asked uh, would the campaign would she campaign for Sanders should he win the nomination quote it's a hypothetical question and since I don't think he's going to be the nominee I don't have to answer that question well that comes through as someone who is a servant of the people and not out for their own <laughs> personal glory in any way shape or form oh, God. Uh, how, oh, boy, quote boy. how many delegates has he won well it's like you know the two states have voted so, so like some Daniel, number Daniel, Daniel, Daniel uh, so, he's dead last. Okay, so come on, he, he first place won, is last place. He hasn't won that many since two two small states have voted. It's like okay, there's you know, what, there's five thousand delegates, like two hundred have been awarded. Well, if he hasn't won the majority, I can't even comment on a question like that because we know the truth that she will she will complain and moan as long as she can. However, she will bend to power. And if Bernie Sanders is the nominee, she will complain, she will have chagrin, she will half-ass it, but she will go out there and ask for those votes. Uh, anyway, she continues, I'm seriously considering endorsing another candidate. That's my answer. So her entire statement going back on this is, that's a rep, Debbie, Marcella, Powell, Powell, uh, is... I don't care about reality or the party or vote blue, but it's all she had to say if she really cared about blo vote blue no matter who was. Yeah, if he wins, I'll vote for him, but I don't think he's going to win and I'm going to endorse someone else. And instead, she's like, I'm not even going to answer that question. I'm going to answer a different question that I made up in my mind. Yeah, how could I possibly uh, yeah, answer a hypothetical yeah. question about something that happens in the future? That's, yeah. How, I'm not, how, could I, how could I answer a hypothetical question? Well, at the same time, I demand people vote blue no matter who, a sentence that has to do with a future point in time. Anyway, that's different. Now we have one of our favorite people. Uh, quote, we're a long way from who our nominee, uh, who is going to be our nominee. And so speculation is Really not helpful at all. That is, of course, our good friend, uh, Deborah Washerman Schultz. Oh, the genius behind the 2016 primary. Look, real quick about this. Never forget that the Democratic establishment and Clinton campaign worked together to deny Bernie Sanders the nomination. Never forget what happened in Philadelphia where they told us all to fall in line. Never forget the fact that the establishment turned a blind eye, a willing blind eye, to the fact that when there were protesters protesting it, there was police snipers on them. Never forget the fact that for a long time, everyone's been trying to run this narrative that the Democrats care about us. No, the establishment Democrats and establishment Republicans are all friends with each other, and the Democrats would rather lose to Donald Trump than have someone like Bernie Sanders win the nomination. And so when you hear these hack frauds constantly saying that, oh, well, he's not the nominee, he's not leading. Well, last I checked, Bernie Sanders got the popular vote. Last I checked, Bernie Sanders has the delegates. Last I checked, he's in the front run. He's leading in all these polls. He's commanding in an earlier story. 11,500 people attend his event in, in Denver, Colorado. He's the only one that's doing this. Klobuchar can't do this. Buttigieg can't do this. Biden can't do this. The only person who could probably afford to do this is, is uh, Bloomberg if he pays people. But none of these other candidates have what it takes. And yet they constantly keep on trying to smear him and smearing all of us for actually standing up for what we believe in. We need Medicare for all. We need to have a Green New Deal. We need to have student debt forgiveness. We need to invest in our infrastructure. We need to get out of these foreign wars. And the only person who could build a coalition of Democrats, socialists, independents, and dare I say it, conservatives, Republicans, libertarians, Greens, socialists, whoever, the only person who could do that is Bernie Sanders. But they don't like it because they don't have what it takes. Paul? So I wanted to finish oh, the point yeah, I was ahead. making earlier. Uh, and so this is very important because right now this is the Democratic Party in this conflict that they've put themselves in. It's this box that they're trying to get out of, but it's a living contradiction that they've put themselves in. They have been rallying for years 
especially targeting Bernie Sanders people, you better vote for the nominee, whoever it is, without exceptions. I don't care if it's Sonic the Hedgehog, you're going to vote for him, <laughs> and blue. you're going to like it, and you're going to get as many rings as he gives you, and he thinks that's good for you. But instead, yeah. we are now seeing the truth. The obvious thing that we knew all along, that it was a facade. It's a thing that is said in jest, as a joke, to try and convince people to think a certain way. This right here, the exact way the Florida conservative Republican establishment Democrats are acting goes against everything that said. If this was AOC saying this, if this was Ilhan Omar saying these exact quotes, they would be a 24-hour news cycle covering it. The establishment Democrats would ask for some form of apology for like offending them in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And everyone would go, yeah, they can't say that. You have to be blue no matter who. But when the establishment Democrats make this point that we've been saying that they're going to make for over a year, it's business as usual. And everyone's like, yeah, you can't push them on that. I mean, they, got their, they have a right to their own opinion. Let's be very clear. If Sanders wins the nominee and you don't support him, you're going to get elected into a different job. Yep. And that's how it is. Or fail to get elected to the one but you Matt, want. Here, what, check yeah. this out. Mad Wolf said this. LOL, I like Knuckles for the Sonic reference. <laughs> so there yeah, we go. I, Paul the Sonic the plan ring. is going to be a minimum wage of at least one gold ring a day for <laughs> everyone. <laughs> uh, so, so, Paul, so, yeah, yeah, final word. Don't forget. So we're talking, this is Dade County, right? Dade County, Florida. Remember Tim Canova? Remember Tim Canova? He ran there. Yep. For Debbie Wasserman Schultz's seat. Remember what happened? Remember what happened? Um, Not once, but mm. twice. Oh, yeah. look at that. He got 5% of everything oh, across the how board. Com, how come these, these vote totals are so awkward and weird? And how come you're, how come, we need to, we, we need to, we need a recount. We'd like to, we'd like to have a legal case nope. about this. Okay, yeah, we're definitely not destroying the ballots right now. What? That was illegal for, a, oh, well, they're gone. Yeah, Is, wasn't it funny that she was like when she when she uh, stole that election from him? She was like, "Oh yeah, five percent with this age group, five percent with this demographic." She just gave him five percent across the board. Yeah, statistically, something that's about as likely as like falling through a table because the atoms moved out of the way at the right time. You think that's a good way here of putting it? Yeah. Media, whoa. So that's Come the thing on. that I mean, like, do you, I don't expect anything different from uh, you know Debbie Wasserman Schultz and, and yeah. her ilk. Like yeah. this is, I mean, this is what they do. This These is, are people that don't believe in democracy. And Let's you're totally real. right to just be like, yeah, if this was AOC saying this about a centrist candidate, it would be hair on fire. Oh my God, these are un these are disrespectful people. We have to get them out of the party. Not like they don't constantly beat that yeah. drum anyway. But uh, just this is what I'm talking about. There, for folks who are not political junkies like we are, and I assume a lot of our audience. Mm -hmm. um, we love you guys. You guys are making this show happen. If you are a casual observer of politics, what that means is what you get through uh, television, what you get, even get through the algorithms on YouTube and uh, other media outlets, what you get on Facebook, what you see on Twitter, Twitter's a little bit different. Um, it, it gets filtered through that lens, this lens of blue no matter who except Bernie. Blue no matter who except Bernie. Bernie's bad, Bernie's bad, Bernie's bad, 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 bad. Um, why can we even talk? I won't even talk. No, hypotheticals, how can we even do such a thing? Let me offer a different one. Like, it's <laughs> the, that's this exact thing that's just, like, taken hold, and it has an influence. Yeah. It, it, it's why you see the voting public basically, in polling, say they agree with every one of Bernie Sanders' platform ideas, yeah. right? When they're posed as, what do you think about this policy? What do you think about this policy? What do you think about this policy? People go, yes, Medicare for all. Yes, Green New Deal. Yes, free college tuition. Yes, living wage. Yeah. Yes, wealth and income inequality being fixed. People like those things. But Bernie Sanders, boy, they keep telling me he's bad. I don't remember why, but... Well, I it's, guess it, it's Amy just Klobuchar like likes those things. It's just like in New Hampshire where that one person where they were interviewing, like, hey, why, who would you vote for? And he said Bernie Sanders because everyone keeps on speaking negatively about him. Because you know what? At the uh, end of the day, for every one person that's it's, like it's that, I think yeah, we're going to lose you. five or six or eight or ten more people. Yeah. To, they're just like, well, I like him, but they keep telling me he's so bad, and I don't pay enough attention to this to really understand why, but it's their job. And it becomes it becomes an argument from authority fallacy. Yeah. Right? I, I, they're in, yeah. in a position of authority, so they're, they're basically trying 
trying to will it into existence. But I think that in this day and age, we're in a spot where, again, like if Sanders ran yes, it's in, in 2000, yeah. I would have I would have said he would, he could never win. But because it's changing again, the amount of people that do the opposite, that completely distrust mainstream news, is more than the people that trust it. Yeah. The amount of people that watch it is less than 10 percent of the country. Um, there's still so many people out there that aren't even. They don't, don't even know anything about politics uh, right now. So it's complicated. It's, it's uh, difficult. But right now is the best chance we have, the best chance we've ever had in the last 100 years, really even since FDR, to have this opportunity. The only thing that would increase the opportunity, and this is what I've talked about before on the show, is a recession happening that would basically guarantee Sanders. But it looks like my timing was off, as it usually is, and it's not happening when I thought it was, but it might happen soon. But anyway, the point we have to remember in all this is we are autonomous. We make these choices. And if the Democratic Party decides truly that they're just going to cheat Sanders in a way that's unredeemable... Well, we're just going to burn their party down and see how they like it.